the greatest earthly problem there is in division in humankind around the world is that of lack of resources. The world made some changes since 1980, and no longer do we have production done in places that have standards, health, environmental, and social standards. A lot of times the people are being forced to work, you know, in 18-hour days with no bathroom breaks, with no eating, not getting enough money to even send their children to school. If everyone had enough income, they could buy their own resources, they could buy their own home, they could buy their own food, their own health care. My name is Emory Hinkst. I'm a retired Lutheran pastor. Fair trade is actually a, a free, fair market solution to, to, for many of our problems. My name is Alan Joseph and I've recently opened up what's called Living Wage. It, we do importing of fair trade goods. Uh, I was working with the legislature and I decided one day that really they weren't doing any economic development at all. Uh, just handing out money to companies was not any kind of development. And that's why I launched into my fair trade work. Um, I'm Debbie Gibson. I'm a volunteer here at 10,000 Villages. I come in every other weekend to spend some time uh, in the store telling people the stories. I was intrigued with the whole idea of a new way to impact people's lives. Just by making, you know, earrings or rings for us, they're able to send their kids to school and you know, really build the future for them. My name is Emily Alby and I'm the manager of 10,000 Villages. It could really be, I mean, anything that's handmade basically by someone or hand produced in a farm. So, you know, it could be a necklace you're wearing or um, even a t-shirt that you're wearing or a coffee cup you're drinking out of in the morning or the chocolate that you eat on your break. I mean, all of that can be fair trade. It just depends on how the people who are making that are being treated. This is actually a market solution to some of our worst environmental and social problems. That's what's different about the fair trade. The artisans who are making the products or making the coffee or the tea or the chocolate, whatever it may be, are getting paid a fair and living wage, they're getting treated fairly. I like the fact that the people that produce these goods are actually paid a living wage. And so it helps the whole economy of that village. If it takes eight hours, they should get paid this much, and if they have to use this material, this is how much they should make. I think it's important to realize that a lot of what we have in the United States is brought in from other countries, and we should be concerned about whether or not those people are being exploited or sustained by our decisions. So you buy a gift for someone else, but it's also a gift to the artisan because we're buying their product from a long distance away. Uh, we're not paying them more than it's worth, we're paying them what it takes for them to survive. I got to meet a woman, Shova, from um, Bangladesh 12 years ago. She lost her son in an accident and she didn't have any money so she started working and she makes little palm leaf stars that we sell around Christmas that hang on the Christmas tree. From the money that she's made, she's built her brother a house. She sends all of her brother's kids to school. She has running water in her house, which is a huge deal in Bangladesh. So, I mean, stories like that are amazing because you think, oh, little palm leaf stars that we hang on our Christmas tree really aren't a big deal. But for someone like that who makes them day in and day out for the past 13 years, I mean, it's made a huge difference. I would like to see them be able to make their own money so that this issue of immigration in the United States, I mean, I, would, I welcome, I, mean, I, I don't fight immigration, but I would like for these people to be able to stay in their own, own, own country. If they had enough food, clothing, shelter, and care, health care and education, they wouldn't have to say, well, I, we need to get over to the U.S. I think sometimes people don't realize what a difference they can make. Instead of boycotting a certain country or company, it's just set standards. And, and that's what you're doing when you're being a conscious consumer right now. You're imposing standards upon yourself. Their economic decisions can impact lives for either good or ill. You know, talking to someone else and spreading the word about fair trade, you may not have the opportunity now to make a huge difference, but I think that if it grows and everyone learns about it, it's going to become a huge movement.